Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial for LR Timelapse 6. I often got the question if it's possible with LR Timelapse 6 to do a fully internal workflow without having to go to Lightroom. Yes, it's possible, but with some limitations. My recommendation is always to do the editing of the keyframes in Lightroom because there you will have all the options. Also, the video exporting from Lightroom will have more options than if you do everything internally in LR Timelapse. But nevertheless, today I'm going to show you the simple workflow without Lightroom. Okay, let's go for it. I've just loaded the same sequence here that I've showed you in the basic tutorial where I explained all the options via Lightroom. So make sure to watch that if you haven't. We are going to start with the keyframes wizard. In this case, again, we'll set three keyframes and now will save. And what happens now is that LR Timelapse automatically generates visual previews for the keyframes. And this is especially useful if you are going to do the internal editing here, because now you have this editor and it might be familiar to you if you work with Lightroom because it shows some of the Lightroom tools here. So for example, now we can work with exposure. The limitation here is that every change on one of the sliders will require the visual preview to be regenerated. So it will just be slower than if you do it in Lightroom and it will also not be as smooth in terms of editing, but it lets you adjust the settings here and do some rough basic editing. The white balance by default is set to as shot. I'm going to set it to custom now because I want to do some white balance editing here, make it a little bit warmer at the beginning as we did it last time in Lightroom also. Of course, the preview here in LR Timelapse is also kind of limited because in order to quickly generate those visual previews, we cannot have a very high risk preview here, but it might be sufficient for you to judge the colors. Apart from the tone and contrast edits here, you also have texture clarity dehaze. As in Lightroom, use them with care in order to avoid some contrast flicker. But of course you can use them, you can use the sharpening here and you can apply some noise reduction if you need to. But of course you won't have the crop tool here, you won't have the masks, gradients, circular gradients, paintbrush and so on, which all also can be animated in LR Timelapse. But of course, with the simple editor here, it's not possible. But nevertheless, I think that's a nice edit. So now let's bring the edits from the first keyframe to the next. As opposed to the sync script that we have in Lightroom, now you have that sync button here, which will sync the settings to the next keyframe. Now you can do your re-editing here. We make it a little bit cooler. We drag down the exposure a little bit. Okay, that's nice. And now let's sync it to the last keyframe. And also we only do the changes now. Increase exposure. You also have a nice histogram here where you can see if you're overexposing. And what is very valuable also is that you can see the brightness progression here by this little indicators on the keyframes because this is already the brightness of the developed images and if you do some kind of progression like here you would like the images to get brighter of course and so this will indicate the brightness of the images. As you might have noticed the visual previews in this mode only get generated for the keyframes and this is indicated by those little circles here and also by this icon. You can switch between the full visual preview mode for the whole sequence and this limited mode by clicking on this icon, but normally that will happen automatically now if we apply the auto transition, this icon changes and now the visual previews will be generated for the whole sequence. Visual previews have been finished now, but this looks a little bit unnatural now because we have a sunrise progression here and the curve of the luminosity first goes down before going up. So if we play that back, you can see the shadows get darker here 
and that's unnatural. Before correcting that, I would again set a reference area which I explained in the basic tutorial in order to see if the same happens to the global image here. And yes, it does. It shouldn't get darker here. So what we can do now is we can just re-edit our keyframes. And that's also a reason why this internal editor is so valuable because we can now just switch here between the keyframes and check out the luminosity. And you can clearly see the sky is much brighter here in the first keyframe than on the second one. And that's not really natural. So what I would like to do now is just drag down the exposure for the first keyframe a little bit and make that darker. Okay, that's really dark, way too dark. So make it a little bit brighter and monitor this pink curve. So if you imagine now a connection from here to here, that would look much more natural. So let's do that. And maybe in order to not have the histogram so dark here, we can increase the whites a little bit for the first image, which will make the mountain a little bit brighter. Okay, let's do the auto transition. And all the visual previews will be recalculated for at least a part of the sequence where we changed the edits in order to connect those keyframes again. Now that already looks much better. We don't have that unnatural progression anymore. It's getting brighter as the sunrise progresses here. And you saw we easily fixed this in LR time lapse without having to do a round trip to Lightroom. And uh, this kind of corrections are also useful if you do the whole workflow via Lightroom. So you can just combine that workflows with each other. Next step would be to apply the visual deflicker. And that's the same that I explained in the basic tutorial. So let's just do a quick multi-pass deflicker with two passes. Apply that. Okay, the flicker is finished. Let's pop out the preview and check the sequence out. So again, we have a nice progression here and only used LR time lapse to do the edits. Of course, we couldn't use any gradients and so on, but nevertheless, for many sequences, this might be fine that way. Now let's do the internal export. We just click on export and render and we need to select the output folder. As I explained in the basic tutorial, I would recommend to use a separate folder from the original raw files in order to keep that clean and separated from each other. Now it shows the current sequence. Again, you have your presets here for rendering. I will use the standard 4K UHD preset, force my aspect ratio to 16 to 9, set my crop a little bit lower, apply some motion blur, sharpen, and have it shown in Explorer. So let's just export and render here. After finishing the rendering, our Explorer came up with a selected file that we just created, and now we can play it back. It's a nice transition here as we edit it. This is a way to do a simple workflow only in LR time lapse without having to go to Lightroom. When doing so, please remember that we are using the same XMP technology. In the background, we are also using Adobe technology to develop the images, so you can easily go back and forth those workflows and combine them. That's no problem at all. But I also think that's important to know because it's fair to have a Lightroom license when you work with a lot of time lapse, even if you don't use Lightroom every time when editing a time lapse, we are still using the technology from Adobe here. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial video was valuable to you. If you have any questions, please join me in the forum, forum.lrtimelapse.com. I will be there to answer your questions get your suggestions for new features or whatever. So see you there. Bye. If you like the video, leave me a thumbs up, 
And if you're interested in more information about LR time lapse and time lapse photography in general, just make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that.